Welcome to Cologne. Thanks for joining us as we explore the fourth largest city in Germany during its most exciting time, Carnival, otherwise known as the fifth season. Today, we'll travel to and throughout Cologne using the incredible Deutschlandkarte, also known as the 49 euro ticket, and let you know how tourists can take advantage of this fantastic travel opportunity. We'll join the biggest carnival celebration in Germany, We'll visit the third largest cathedral in the world and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We'll explore this ancient city that dates back to the Roman Empire and we'll enjoy the unique beer and culinary culture of Cologne. I hope you're excited. Let's go. Hey everybody, um, here we are. We're back in Germany and we are taking our first trip. We're gonna to go to Cologne to uh, celebrate the uh, carnival. Um, some people call it Fasching, some people call it Fasnacht. Uh, Americans know it as Mardi Gras. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take the train using the Deutschland ticket, the 49 euro ticket. So that's, you pay 49 euros a month and you can use, you can travel on the train as much as you want, uh, except you cannot use the high speed uh, intercity express trains. You can only use regional trains. So we're gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. It might be a little busy getting into Cologne because uh, Cologne has a huge, um, carnival celebration so we'll see how that train is but we, we catch the train here in uh, Neubrücke and it's supposed to take about four hours to uh, to get there so um, yeah we'll see how it goes we're excited we're excited to travel we're excited to get to Cologne and uh, we can't can't wait to share our adventure with you thanks Party's already started. Cologne, or Köln in German, lies on the banks of the Rhine River in western Germany. With 1.1 million inhabitants, it's the fourth largest city in Germany. It was originally founded by the Romans in the first century AD, and there are still remnants of ancient Rome in the city today. The Cologne Cathedral is the third largest cathedral in the world and the tallest twin tower church in Europe. Entrance into the cathedral is free, but you will have to pass through a security screening. Welcome to Cologne, everyone. So we got here, uh, I don't know, about 30, 40 minutes ago, and our hotel is um, only uh, like uh, three quarters of a mile from the main train station from the Hauptbahnhof, but uh, all the roads are, are so, uh, so packed with people and closed for the for the big uh, carnival parade that we've had to um, to really navigate our way around the city and uh, so I think maybe we're about to uh, get to our hotel so we can come out and have some fun um, but yeah we're walking around and every most people have uh, costumes on we do not uh, and we're pushing luggage carrying luggage so yeah kind of weighted down a little bit but we did have some uh, some good roasted meat. They had a, a stand that was selling bratwurst and Krakauer and uh, and steak. So it's quite delicious. So yeah, the adventure continues. Like I said, welcome to Cologne. Now, one thing that kind of stood out to us was just how fast the cleaning crews came through as soon as the party was over in a particular area. They came through almost immediately. They started sweeping up and vacuuming the street. We stayed at the Lindner Hotel Cologne City Plaza, which was in a great location, and our room had a fantastic view of the parade. The hotel was very reasonably priced, and you could pay in either Euro or you can use travel points. Surprisingly, we did not have to book our room very far in advance. Carnival, or Americans may recognize it as Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday, is celebrated throughout the world in historically Catholic areas. And Cologne has the biggest carnival celebration in Germany. Carnival officially starts on the 11th of November at 11.11, 11, 
but the party really roars in the last five days leading up to Ash Wednesday. In Germany, the biggest day of the celebration is Rosenmontag, or Rose Monday, and we were fortunate to be in Cologne for this year's Rosenmontag Parade. All right, so I'm gonna try this Kropfen. I think they call them Berliner here in Cologne, actually. So I'm gonna try this delicious Berliner and see what's inside. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So there's like some sort of jelly, but there's also alcohol in there. <laughs> so it's quite tasty and maybe I don't know, maybe if you eat it enough of these, you'll get a little tipsy, but it's very delicious. <laughs> After watching the parade from our hotel window for a while, we went out and celebrated on the street. The parade started at around 10 in the morning, and it didn't end until 10 that evening. During the parade, over 140 tons of candy are given out, 700,000 chocolate bars, and over 300,000 flowers. Spectators and partygoers yell Kola Alaf throughout the celebration. The theme of the floats range from comedy to some political and current event themes, often making fun of politicians. A certain former U.S. president has been featured not so favorably in years past. All right, so this is the, the local beer here in Cologne. It's called Kolsch, and they serve it in these small little glasses. They're only a uh, 0.2 liters, so that's um, less than half the size of a normal German beer. But uh, so you drink them, and it's pretty good. It's, it's good beer, and you drink it. And as long as you leave it on the table, um, they'll continue to bring you more um, as long as you drink. And the way you stop it, you have to put your little coaster on top, and that's the signal to stop bringing you beer. But if you don't put a thing on top, they're going to keep bringing you beer all day, I suppose, until you fall out of your chair. So, prost. All right, so this is one of the traditional dishes of Cologne um, called Himmel and Erd, or Heaven and Earth, um, I guess. And so we've got mashed potatoes and gravy, some fried onions, um, some applesauce, and some fried uh, blood sausage or uh, yeah, blood, uh, blood burst. And so it's supposed to be a traditional delicacy here in Cologne. And so I'm gonna try it out and we'll see how it goes. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Mm. It's quite tasty. The apples mixed in with it. Get a little sweet taste. Yeah, very nice, very good. And then Betty has uh, goulash soupe, which is a famous, di famous dish all throughout Germany. One of our favorite dishes. It's, it's great um, when you're skiing to come in from uh, a cold day on the slopes and have some nice uh, goulash soup to help you warm up. Very delicious goulash soup. So yeah, traditional German dish. Uh, you can find it all over the country. It's very, usually, normally it's very, very good. All right, so we are in Cologne Cathedral, which is the third largest Gothic cathedral in the world. Uh, it has two massive spires outside. Um, just a really impressive building. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, construction started here in 1248 uh, and they built for a while and then they stopped for a while and then they built for a while and uh, but it wasn't completed until 1880 so uh, hasn't been completed all that long ago but um, yeah very very impressive uh, building uh, Napoleon came here when Napoleon was here the building wasn't finished and he actually used it for a horse stable um, and um, and to store some of his troops in as, a, as an army barracks, I guess. Um, now, one interesting thing about this cathedral, you can climb up to the top of one of the towers uh, and get a great workout. But supposedly, um, this cathedral contains the um, remains of the three wise men that uh, visited Jesus upon his birth. So they were, um, as the story goes, they were being held in Milan, Italy. And then at one point, the Emperor Barbarossa um, wanted to bring, I 
guess, some interest or some money into Cologne. So he went down to Milan, took the uh, the relics, the remains of the three wise men and brought them here. So they're here in a, um, uh, in a special area. And I think it's once a year they bring them out and kind of, I don't think you can actually see what's inside, but they bring the container out and march it around, uh, bring it around the, the church. So uh, yeah, so something of interest, um, three wise men supposedly right here in the Cologne Cathedral. So the remains of the three wise men who came to visit Jesus are in a golden box there. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's true, I don't know, maybe it's not, but supposedly that's where they're at. And it brought a lot of pilgrims uh, back in the Middle Ages into Cologne, Cologne that um, uh, spurred on the, the, the tourism industry and the, uh, the wealth of the city. All right, so out here in front of the Cologne Cathedral, um, if you look up at the towers, 157 meters high or so, close to 160 meters tall. And if you look, it's hard to appreciate uh, how big the things are up at the top. But if you look at the flowers up there, um, I'll show you here in just a second, here in just a second, um, how big those actually are. Now this cathedral, like I said earlier, construction was started in 1248, wasn't finished until 1880. It was bombed several times during World War II, I think about 13 or 14 times, accidentally. Uh, it was never an intended target. Um, and that was not because the allies didn't want to bomb it because it was a church or anything like that. But it was so big, they used it as a landmark to guide them um, as they were flying. So they didn't want to destroy it because it helped them. Um, they didn't have very good navigation systems back back then. So it helped them to guide on their different runs. So they didn't want to destroy, the, destroy this cathedral. But it was bombed inadvertently around 13 times. It was not destroyed, uh, but it did receive some damage. All of that has been repaired. And now it's back in its, all of its glory here in Cologne. All right, so this is a replica of the, the flowers on top of the towers on top of the cathedral. So you can kind of get a grasp, uh, appreciate just how big they are. And so this is, um, these are nine and a half meters tall and about four, uh, 4.6 meters wide. So they're really big. So this is what they, if you brought them down from the top down to the ground, this is what they would look like. For the best view of Cologne, you need to cross over the Hohenzollern Bridge across the Rhine River, looking at the thousands of love locks. I can't believe they haven't cut those off, but uh, you cross over and then you get to a, a great, fantastic city view of the uh, cathedral and uh, the cityscape of Cologne. The other day, it was difficult. I told you when we were walking through the city, uh, trying to find our hotel because of the parade. Um, I wish that we would have thought to use the uh, subway system. It would have been much easier to get to our, our hotel instead of uh, trying to navigate through all that traffic and uh, parade goers and uh, partying. Another benefit of the Deutschlandkarte, the 49 euro ticket, is that you can also use local transportation. So all subways, uh, streetcars, buses, anything in the local area, you can also use your Deutschland ticket to ride. Thanks for joining us in Cologne. Please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment about your experience in Cologne or how you celebrate Carnival where you live. Be sure to subscribe and follow us for more adventures.